Okay, welcome once again. Uh, this is the uh, third in a series of uh, net logger videos that I'm doing to show you how to uh, do some basic functions of net logger. Uh, my name is Adam Dye. My call sign is N4NT, November 4, November Tango, um, as seen up here in the operator section. Uh, this video is uh, going to be for those that are uh, wanting to monitor nets via net logger. Um, it's pretty simple if you're checking into a, a VHF UHF net that just does a check-in format. You pretty much can open it up uh, and observe and use the uh, instant messenger and maybe look and see who's monitoring the nets. Um, <clears throat> as far as our HF net goes, there's a few more things that you may want to do with this program. Uh, so hopefully uh, I will cover those and show you how to how to log some contacts. So the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, come up here to select net and open that box. Uh, and that's come up on, on my, other, my other screen here. I'm going to move it over where you can see it. And here's a list of nets that are currently active um, as I'm doing this video. So I actually participate in this net occasionally. So I'm going to uh, open this one up because it's going to show you some different things that you can uh, that you can use as far as um, net logger goes, especially when you check into our HF net and, and you decide to log some contacts. So I'm going to select that net, highlight it there in blue, and hit monitor net. And boom, there's the screen. Um, the uh, suggestion that I make is that you, you select net filter right here. And what that's going to do is, is your log down here at the bottom, that's going to filter out and only show you contacts you've made on this particular net or with this particular club. Um, so if you select net filter, and I should have somebody down through here in red, surely. Uh, whoop, doesn't look like it. Oh, yeah, I know I've worked him. Okay, so if you select net filter and click on that, um, if I had worked him on this particular net before, then it would just show his call down here and how many times I've worked him on this net. Some nets you can work the same person multiple times um, for different awards. If I click call sign filter, here we go. So it's going to, I've, I've selected him. I'm going to expand the screen for just a moment. And as you can see, uh, Homer and I have worked several times. Um, I joined Ole Miss in 2000 and uh, he's been there a lot longer. And so any kind of award that comes along that he could work me for, uh, we have done that so anyway so there's those uh, couple functions uh, I'm not going to go through all of these because those are the two basic ones I use I either do net filter or call sign filter uh, the gist of this uh, net or one of the things about this net is try to work everybody that you you can on every net so the fact that I haven't worked him on this net it shows me that if I do net filter okay I'm going to get this out of the way so I'm going to slide this down um, and I'm going to, uh, so, so we're a uh, participating station. We're not, uh, we're not net control or anything. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, this is the person that's being acknowledged right now. So if, they, if we were on the air, this is who, uh, who we would hear. Let's say, uh, let's say um, I hear Homer and I want to work him later when it's his turn or my turn. Um, if he goes up for grabs on his turn or whatever. So I can come in here and click. And let's say I've got him at a 5.9. I'll go ahead and plug that information in. And once I plug that in, um, and let's say my turn comes and I want to work Homer, then I can, uh, or let's say I've, uh, I've put signal reports in for a couple different stations, right? And I've sat here, and some of these nets run really long, so I've sat here for about an hour. And now it's my turn, and I'm trying to remember, well, who, did, who all did I hear when they checked in? So I hit come up here, just like Excel. And it's going to reorder them based on me putting information in that box. So when it's my turn, I go up here and, hey, Homer got you at 5.9. He comes back to me at a 5.9. So I plug that information in. And then to log that contact, I just right click and come up here to log contact. And I click that. And I'll erase that later because it wasn't an actual contact. So let me pull that back up here now. So now under my net filter, um, he's showing if I go to call sign filter it just adds him in there uh, another thing that it does let me get this out of the way is now 
he is highlighted in red. It shows that we've worked before. So uh, Bristol Club folks and Mears folks, we have our 10 meter net and you decide to work other stations and you're running net logger. Once you log that contact, leave it in there, it's gonna highlight it in red. Um, another thing that you can do during the net, just uh, like we talked about in the second video, is you can open up the instant messenger window. The almost instant messenger as they, uh, they call it. You can uh, reduce the size of this window and put these together if you'd like and that way you have both. I run two screens so when I'm running, uh, when I'm on a net, and you can see they, they, they use this quite a bit. So when I'm on a net I actually uh, have this off to the side somewhere. But um, for instant messenger especially I would recommend even if you have a single screen have that up beside your logging session. We get rid of that. And then if you want to see who all is monitoring the net. Again, I run a second screen, so I'm going to bring this in from the second screen. Oops. And as you can see, all these folks are checked in. And somewhere down here, you'll find a little old me lurking. And there's a few people that started lurking since I started lurking. And uh, I will unlurk here in a moment. Uh, I don't recommend putting that screen besides your other one because you're going to lose a whole lot of space if you do that. Um, another thing you can do is you can come up here and you can get rid of this if you want to see more of the screen and then um, we're going to reorder these by the number that they checked in. Then you'll you'll still be able to uh, you'll be able to see more that way. You can still see the numbers that you put in. It gives you a lot more area. But as you can see this net has got about 41 people checking in and several lurking so it's going to take up a lot of screen. You're going to you'll know who you worked because it'll it'll come up and say W um, right there and then it just so happens right now it's it's his turn so it's uh, showing him as purple. Once the purple line goes away it'll be red again and uh, it'll show the fact that you've worked him so you don't necessarily have to have this down here to keep looking at. Um, you could set that up um, call sign filter that kind of thing. You can also come up here and uh, set up uh, let's see your workstation flag and what that does it opens up a box and it says I want to know if I've worked this person on this net this band this mode what what have you so I select net that way if I've worked him on the Ole Miss net and I haven't worked him on the the NATA net then when I go to the NATA net he's not going to show as a workstation because most of these nets the gist of it is is work everybody on the net um, if you are checked into a two meter net, 440 net, any kind of anything like that where it just takes check-ins, a lot of this stuff won't pertain to you. Um, everybody will just show in white except for net control and the acknowledge station. Um, <clears throat> most of this is just for uh, checking in with HF nets. But as we have found with the uh, uh, Bristol Club and the Mirrors Club, it's kind of handy to have the net logger session up because you can um, get on AIM and kind of chat back and forth and exchange information there kind of gives you a little uh, a nice little side activity to to do while the net is going on um, another thing you can do is you can start the net logger session a little ahead of the net and chat with folks before you actually start taking check-ins or if it's an HF net you can build an early list um, that way you can work through it a little quicker when the net actually starts so that's kind of the reason we do that okay so we've uh, we've logged our check-in let's say and I'm not going to, I think I can, okay, I, I'm going to have to go in and delete that one somehow because it's not a genu genuine contact. But um, I'll figure that out momentarily. So let's say we've worked this net and we've logged all these check-ins. And now we want to transfer this information into our logging program. So what we'll do is we'll come down here to the bottom and you can hit the control button or you can hit the shift button. If you hit control, you go down through here and you pick each one individually. If you hit the shift button, you can hit the down arrow, and as you can see, you can scroll through. So what I do is I leave all of my contacts in NetLogger, so NetLogger will have the most up-to-date information. But I don't use NetLogger as my primary logging program. I use N3 FJP Logger. So since I use a different logging program, I'm, I'm going to want to transfer all this information into that program. Um, I, 
NetLogger has the capability of uploading to EQSL and LOTW and all that, but I do all that through N3FJP anyway, um, or whatever logging program that that you use. So uh, I'm going to ignore this contact I put right here. Um, normally I'd start at the top of the list and go down. So the net's over. Um, actually, let me hit stop monitoring. There we go. The net's over. We've uh, we've stopped monitoring. We've logged out. Net control shut down. What have you. Now I want to transfer this information into my logging program so that I can EQSL and LOTW and club log and uh, whatever else they come up with over the years. So I'm going to select all the contacts that I made tonight, today, whatever the case may be. And we're just going to hypothetically say here that we, so we made these contacts. So then I'm going to come up here to file and I'm going to export those contacts. I can do a CSV file. Or an ADIF file just depends on what your uh, logging program is I can select all my contacts everything so if you've used if you're using this for the first time you can use that but after that if you want to store the information in NetLogger so that the screen looks right you're going to do selected contacts I hit selected contacts and I have a file that I made for NetLogger transfer. So the first time you do it, you're gonna to have to name the file and save it somewhere. I have a folder on my desktop called Ham Radio. You can save it to your desktop, you can save it wherever. So I select my NetLogger transfer, and then I just save that file. And it says it already exists, you wanna replace, of course. Five contacts were successfully exported. Now this is a NetLogger video, so I'm not going to go into showing you how to import your contacts into your specific logging program because yours may be different than mine. I, I run N3FJP, so I just go in and hit file and import and I put all that into my log. Um, the cool thing with that program is if I accidentally duplicate something, it'll uh, it'll tell me and I can exclude it, um, that kind of thing. But it's up to you to uh, put in your individual uh, uh, loggers and that kind of thing. Earlier, when I logged my contact with uh, with Homer, I showed you the way that I did it. I right-click and hit Log Contact. I like doing the right-click because it gives you a lot of options right there. You could also come up here to this big blue button and hit Log Contact and do the exact same thing. Um, either way, there, it's, it's like most computer programs. There's more than one way to do uh, several different things. or several different ways to do more than one thing. Let me put it that way. Um, so you can actually, uh, and if you if you forget or something, you can come in here while while you're in standalone mode and do it. But uh, of course, that does affect your your timestamp. Um, as you can see too, there there's an example like Ole Miss uses member IDs. They actually have a server where they keep all this information. So when they update one, it updates for all. Um, any net controller that calls a net is going to pull this information. Um, the way I showed in the earlier video it's individual to each computer but um, they have uh, several pieces of information that they retain in there uh, like they changed my name from Christopher to Adam so when I check into Ole Miss I don't have to remind them to call me by my middle name that kind of thing um, but it's just a handy program you can you can use it kind of as your primary logging program I, I don't and don't recommend it because it's uh, it's more for nets, but uh, you can actually come in here in standalone mode and you can type in a contact um, and log that information and keep it, but uh, it doesn't really have a place for the mode. Actually, it would log it as if you made the contact on that net, so it would be kind of difficult to use as a standalone pro logging program, but as far as uh, integrating with these nets and making some, some kind of extra feature to go along with them, it's a, it's a pretty good program for that. I've used it for several years, but that's the uh, the gist of it. Um, I hope you enjoyed these videos. Uh, this will probably be the last one that we make, but um, I won't say that for sure because something may come up and we may do a how-to video on some other aspects of uh, NetLogger. You can always go to the NetLogger website and pull up the user manual, and there's a whole lot more features that you can uh, you can use. Um, something else I'll show you real quick if I didn't cover it already you can you can go in here and uh, tag some statuses on these individuals um, let's say uh, you're working for your worked all states and Hawaii comes on 
um, then you can pick, uh, well, there's California. Oh, well, there, there's, there's Hawaii for real. So let's say you need Hawaii uh, and you want to flag that. It'll make that one green, say needed. That does not change how that looks to anyone else. That is, if you're participating in the net, that is only on your screen. But you can uh, you can go down through there and flag a few contacts um, as needed um, if you need them for some other reason. There uh, there are other different flags and things that you can use. Um, most some of these are net control type things, but you can flag them on your screen and for whatever uh, reason and making notes for yourself. Um, I recommend you just kind of go through the uh, through the functions and so forth and. Uh, see what all is there but those are the basic functions to be able to be a net controller to participate in the net and uh, how to set everything up so uh, I hope you enjoy these videos and hope they are uh, um, in, uh, useful to you for the information uh, thank you